Hey guys, it is Miss Sim Reno. If you are returning to the channel, welcome back. And if you're brand new, I'm really excited that you decided to join me here today for another speed build. And that is because we're on a 64 by 64 lot in Chestnut Ridge. Now, I told myself when I saw that there was a 64 by 64 lot that I would quite literally never build another one again. Uh, I've done it twice, I think. I think I did it in Brindleton Bay at one point. I made like this huge family farm and then I did like a huge English farm when we got cottage living. And that is the last time I have built on a lot this big. I did just do a build in Brindleton Bay that was a 50 by 40, which is still pretty big, but it's not a 64 by 64. And I was looking at this lot and I was like, oh, this would be really cool to just like make a really huge ranch and include like all the animals and stuff and things. I've got some really good inspiration pictures on Pinterest. Maybe I should just, you know, go poke around the lot, check it out, see if I like it. And yeah, I started building this house and it just, I, I did it. Like I did the thing. <laughs> I built an entire ranch on this 64 by 64 lot and it did not take me as long as I thought it was going to take me. I think it was about a day and a half of me working on this to actually get it done. There was a lot of stuff like done off camera just because it took a bit of time for me to really conceptualize, you know, the layout, the flow of things, what activities I wanted and where. That's usually my struggle with a lot this big too, is trying to fill it, but in a way that looks natural as well. Like the landscaping usually throws me off for a, a build this big as well. But let me just say, I was working off of an interior inspiration picture, number one and a layout for a ranch. That was kind of an inspiration as well. I took some took some inspiration from that. I didn't actually copy the layout that I found. And I was working on an exterior inspiration picture too. So I kind of combined a few different things, which I don't typically do. I also had no idea for like a color scheme. I, I was going in completely unaware of what I wanted the outcome to be. The only thing I knew was that I wanted the interior to have super high ceilings in the living room. And I wanted it to be a very open floor plan on the first floor. So there is an open living, dining, and I'm gonna say open kitchen just because everything is separated by spandrels and columns and not walls. So everything is pretty open. Um, but I think that the kitchen is probably more sectioned off than the rest of the house. But you can see that the exterior is coming together. It is a very, very simple shape. And I decided to go with this dark blue wood paneling from the new pack. I thought it was really pretty. And I ended up using lighter wood tones as well. And I do carry that out into, well, not out. I carry it in <laughs> to the inside as well because I was trying to play around with the different wood tones and textures that we did get. My first build that I did with this pack, it was very like dark wood toned. It's it's my go-to, it's what I gravitate towards, I can't help it. And then my second build, which ironically you might be seeing after this one, I'm not 100% sure and I don't remember what I even said in the voiceover, which I've already recorded, <laughs> but I'm really excited about this build and I wanted to get it up first because I kind of like it more than the other one. Anyway, I don't want to confuse you. This is my third build with the pack, but I think you're seeing it prior to my second build, which is a convert, a converted, a converted barn, which is, I think it's on a 30 by 20. Yeah, it's like a converted barn, which technically is considered a barn dominium, fun fact, fun little, fun little tidbit of information that I learned. But yeah, the exterior of the house is pretty much together at this point. There's also this barn here, which I really enjoyed. I like making barns, they're very simplistic, but this barn has two stables and then it's got some nectar making stuff and things because of course it does. I really enjoyed that. Now there is room for one cow and or llama. So if you have cottage living, we've got a little pasture for a cow slash llama, depending on what you would like. I decided to play test this with a cow. So got a cow maybe. And then there's two chicken coops. We've got the jumping obstacles for the horses as well as the barrels. And then we also have a garden patch in the back. Yeah, we've got a garden patch. And then I think there's like this little I don't know what I would really call it. I'm just gonna call it a platform because technically it's a platform. There's a platform back in the backyard behind the house where there is uh, like some outside dining and, and stuff like that. So there's a lot of room to add more activities if you would like, but there's also a lot of activities 
already here, if that makes any sense. So here you can see we're trying to work out the layout and what I really wanted this to look like. Again, I didn't have a perfect vision of what I wanted it to be. And I did do a lot off camera, not so much with the layout, but more so with the landscaping because the landscaping took a long time and I didn't exactly know what I wanted it to look like, but I'm just going through the debug menu, trying to grab things that I think I'm going to use throughout this build. I didn't use absolutely everything, but this was only my, I'll say only my third look at the debug menu. But for this build, I gave it a much more extensive look just because I knew there was a ton of stuff in my other bills that didn't necessarily apply or just things that I ended up not using. And here I was thinking of adding three greenhouses, which is very reminiscent of the big farm lot that I did in Brindleton Bay at one point. I think there were three huge greenhouses well before the greenhouse haven kit, but I never really used that kit that much. So I was trying to kind of use it here. I loved how everything looked, but I didn't think that I wanted to have that many different areas for like gardening and stuff like that. I was trying to keep this balanced because I think when I did the huge English farm, number one, there was like an orchard of trees, there were like 20 trees. There were a ton of gardening plots. There was just too much for one or two Sims to handle. Thankfully now with the horse ranch pack, you can hire a ranch hand. I'm, I'm assuming you could hire a gardener on top of that as well. I think the ranch hand will do chores. You have to assign chores to them. So they'll like take care of the animals explicitly. They'll repair things, which is kind of nice too. I don't know, it's, it, it seems to be a role that is combined with a few others, which is kind of nice. So you don't have to hire a bunch of different people. But yeah, if you had a ranch hand, maybe a gardener or something, this would be a lot easier to handle this lot and everything that's on it. But yeah, having like two chicken coops with potentially eight chickens each, that's a lot. You gotta socialize with all of them so they don't run away. You have to feed all of them. You gotta clean the coops out, that's a lot. If you have a cow or a llama, you have to, you obviously have to socialize with it, clean it, take care of the barn. You have horses, that's a lot of work already. And then when I was playtesting, I added like 10 to 15 goats and sheep. Like, <laughs> I don't know what, I don't know what I was really doing, but having all of those animals takes a lot of effort. So this also is just for a family of, I think you could probably have up to five Sims. What I did is I have a primary bedroom. I have a kind of like a preteen room is what I'm gonna go with. I think we're gonna go with like a preteen. And then there's another room that I didn't really theme. I wasn't thinking of a particular sim. It could just be a guest room. I kind of wanted to make it plain and it's not heavily cluttered. Like the entire build aside from the exterior, which is a little bit intense, but the inside, it's not heavily cluttered because I was hoping that it would minimize how much effort it would take a machine to upload, like to kind of like load up this lot if you were gonna play with it. Granted, it's a 64 by 64, there's a lot of items. It's gonna be a pretty hefty lot, but I was hoping that the house itself could be a little bit more flexible in regards to the family that you might have in mind. And since I mentioned that there's like this big open living room, dining room combined thing, you'll see it when we get to that point, but it is huge. The ceilings are very, very tall. And I'm just going to say that you could eliminate those high ceilings and you could floor plan out another like two to three bedrooms. So if you really wanted this to be like a generations farm and you wanted a ton more bedrooms for like kids and babies and toddlers and like grandparents and stuff, you could absolutely customize this and create a ton more space in the house, which I think is pretty rare for my builds. They're usually pretty solid in their floor plan. There isn't a ton of flexibility without dismantling a ton of things. But in this, in this build, you can kind of dismantle something very simplistically and gain a lot of space. So that'll make a lot more sense when we get on the, the interior, but you can see that we've been working on the landscaping. I loved it. It just looked kind of like wild and natural, but not overdone. I've noticed that in Chestnut Ridge, I don't feel the urge to over landscape things and I don't like it being super manicured. I don't know what it is. I've heard some other people say this too. So it seems like we're all kind of on the same page with that. <laughs> I don't know. I haven't used any plants aside from the rose bush from Cottage Living that didn't come in the debug menu of this pack. It just seems to work. I don't know what it is. It just seems to work really nicely. And you can see that the house, like the foundation isn't raised super high. It's just raised up by one. So your Sims can still step up there without any, uh, what are they called? Stairs? 
<laughs> that's what they're called. And now we're on to the interior. So you can see right here, this is the big like two story open living space that was based off of one of the inspiration pictures I had, which was the interior one. So I had like the layout, the exterior and the interior ones, I had three separate ones. And I was obsessed with how it looked. You can see me kind of trying to test it with tab mode since we have that in build and buy now <laughs> or in build mode now. And I was trying to see how it would look and what's great. I thought this was so cool. It worked, to, it worked out to my favor. I was thrilled. But from the second story, there is a balcony with two rocking chairs. So if you wanted to, your Sims could sit up on the balcony and like look down into the living room. I don't know why, I just loved the idea. I thought it looked so, so beautiful. And you know what my thoughts was? Because I had a very small balcony. Like we had vaulted ceilings in my living room. My, my childhood home was beautiful. It was built in the 80s. It was like, how much was it back in the 80s? It was like $160,000, $180,000. Could you even imagine? It was huge. It was like a three bedroom, one and a half bath. It had vaulted ceilings in the living room. Really beautiful house, okay? And there was a balcony and like on Christmas morning as a kid, I could look down from the balcony and like see the Christmas tree and all the presents and stuff. Like that's the first thing that came to mind for me. I, I don't know why exactly, but I just loved it so much. So I thought this balcony area was really nice. Now, when I did get in here though, I wasn't 100% sure what I wanted to do direction wise for color scheme. It was really difficult actually. It was really hard. I was trying to use different swatches of these couches because I haven't used different swatches of them. I've used like the black swatch with the cow print and the brown swatch with the cow print and that's about it. And I found that we have some more like pastel colors. So I was trying to go a little bit lighter originally, but I was really not liking how things were working together. And I didn't know what I wanted to do with these super high ceilings as well, because it, it's a little bit awkward. It's a whole second, second story that just doesn't have a floor, right? So they're super high. It's not like I use the tall wall height. I literally made two stories and just opened it up for this living space. And I was thinking like, oh, maybe I want super tall bookshelves, you know, past the fireplace. Like that could be really cool. Maybe I want to go a little bit darker and warmer. But then I thought, oh, this is really reminiscent of the other builds I've done so far with this pack. I want to explore the different swatches and the different color schemes that you can kind of make with this stuff. So I was trying to look at different flooring, like maybe I'll do a brick because we got new swatches of that base game brick with I think the latest update. You know, I was also trying to consider the wallpapers I used because if I use the one that I wanted to, it's the one with the trim, you have to put it on two stories of the house. Do you know what I mean? So what I did is I, I paused, and I kind of took a breather and I tested out a few different things. And this is what I came up with. So there is just horizontal paneling through the entire build, which is a little bit more like modern farmhousey to me, which I carried through into the kitchen. The kitchen is like the most modern part of this entire build, but I thought it was simplistic. I thought it was very natural looking. And I want to call out the fact that I turned one of those fireplaces around and I stacked it on top of the primary fireplace there and I added that wagon wheel as like a decoration so it looks like the fireplace goes up into that high ceiling I just wait till you see the screenshots I'm I'm very excited about this because I thought it came out so nicely and again it's very minimally decorated so like on the coffee table there's nothing I didn't put anything we've got a few side tables with some lamps we've got a plant here and there but I think the curtains on the windows was enough decoration over on the left hand side and then on the right hand side, I just ended up putting some of those wall lanterns that we got with this pack too. And that was simplistic enough for me, it worked. There's also, <laughs> I'm very excited. There is a little like wine closet, nectar closet, my bad, nectar closet. I'll call it a closet because I don't really know what else to call it, but it's kind of off the kitchen because the floor plan was super awkward for the kitchen, but it's got those nectar storage racks. I think there's, I think there's two, four, six, eight, I think there's like 10 of them in there and they can hold upwards of like 12 to 13 or something bottles of nectar. So um, if you do a lot of nectar making, you can store and age a ton of it. But I do it off camera because I just couldn't figure out how to do this. The floor planning was really difficult because I wanted it to be so open, but it was a lot of space to use. Like it was a ton having the dining table in that living space with the big high ceilings. I had this space over here for the kitchen and then just this big open hallway like that's what I'm gonna call it a hallway because I don't know what else to call it it was really weird it was really difficult to work with but I had to basically tell myself that I had to be comfortable with some big open spaces because this build is like pretty big at least for me and and I think that with the amount of rooms 
it's not that big, but it's a bigger footprint. Does that make sense? I hope it does. Anyway, we're working on the kitchen. This is the first go with the kitchen. It was gonna be super rustic with like maybe modern appliances, but I was really, really disliking how it was looking. And again, that awkward space where I have that big china cabinet thing that came with this pack, that is where we end up sectioning it, sectioning it off and turning it into a little nectar closet storage thing. Pantry, how about a nectar pantry? Does that sound better? I feel like that sounds better. I kind of like that. But I figured I would keep in this attempt at the kitchen because, and I've said this before, just because I build a lot and post it on YouTube does not mean that it comes easily. I struggle just like everybody else does. There might be, there were five attempts at this kitchen. I was talking to my dear friend, Rachel Ped as I was doing this. And she was like, show me the kitchen now. Cause I showed her the living room and I think she liked it. And I was like, mm, sorry, I can't. I scrapped it five times by like, <laughs> I literally couldn't do it. I didn't have a kitchen. So you can see the little wine pantry over there to the left-hand side. And it gave me a better shape for this kitchen to actually work with. I also just used a little trick to make that door look like it was open, but there's a, an archway into the little pantry thing. So I thought that was nice. And I used the dream home decorator cabinets and countertops to make this more like modern farmhouse look. I wanted the kitchen to be a little bit more modern, but the appliances are from the country kitchen kit. So they do look maybe a little bit more themed to a farmhouse. And I think the chandeliers help a lot too. They kind of tie in that more rustic farmhouse look without without this modern aspect being too overwhelming. That was my thought process. And I also use the stools, the bar height stools that we got with this pack too. So there's a lot of like rustic elements. I think the one thing that threw me off was these corner and end pieces of the countertops from Dream Home Decorator do have that towel. And I didn't really like the pattern or the colors. It wasn't really matching the rest of the build, but it was so small that I decided it didn't matter that much. I also added the upright piano from Growing Together compared to the one that came with Horse Ranch because the wood textures on the swatches of the one from Horse Ranch are the very distressed woods. And it just wasn't, it, it didn't strike that balance for like modern farmhouse for me. So I ended up using just the pure white swatch of the Growing Together Upright Piano. And I think it looked really nice. I really liked it. It just kind of complemented things. I wanted it to be more of a cream color, but we didn't really have a swatch for that. So I couldn't balance it out, but we also went with darker floors as you can see too. Now I added the sign for the nectar thing just because I thought it was cute. Like maybe they have a lot of guests here or they come and they have people do nectar tastings like in their house sometimes. So I thought it was just kind of a cute addition. There's also that little entryway where I end up putting the tall little skinny wardrobe thing that we got with Horse Ranch, which I think is fantastic. And then there's like a couple of decor items. It's not really a busy entryway whatsoever, but I do clutter up the kitchen because you know me, kitchens are where I will probably put the most clutter aside from kids rooms, which I didn't go, I did not go nuts in the kids room this time. Well, the preteens room. Yeah, like preteen. Cause I was more so going for a theme that would match the house compared to what would match the personality of the preteen. And the reason for that, like I said, is because I wanted this to be kind of a, what's the word? More of a flexible build because I wanted your Sims, whoever you had in mind, to be able to kind of move in and maybe lightly customize things to your needs or to your liking. That was my thought. But um, yeah, the kitchen is almost done. So we've got these three bar height stools so your Sims can sit here and have something to eat, but you also have that full dining table, which is really nice. So again, maybe if they have like friends or people in the community over for, a nectar tasting event. They have that really nice dining table to do that at, but there's also a round dining table in the stables. I know it's weird, it's weird, but I did it. And it's because maybe if they're doing like tours of their little stable and like where they make their nectar, you could sit down really quickly and have a little nectar tasting as well, like a nectar sampling of like a fresh batch. I don't know, it was a nice thought. At least I thought it was. Now here's one of the full, uh, the full bathrooms. You've got two of them in this build, which is very nice. This one is far more modern, I think, than the other one because I did use the sink from this new pack, but I used the shower from Growing Together, which is like super modern. And I really like it. It's also very light because we've got the white paneling. I think it's the white paneling, yeah. I think it's the white paneling or is it the cream one that I use everywhere else? I don't remember, but we've got that. And then we've got like this white slash cream brick. It's just, it's very light in color scheme. Okay. That's what I'm trying to get at. It's very, very light. So it's a little bit different from the rest of the house, which is, it has lighter tones. Like the, you know, the paneling on the walls is lighter. A lot of the wood tones I chose for furniture 
is lighter, but we've got the dark flooring and then the dark columns and spandrels. It just felt like a balance. I don't know. It was me trying to get away from all of the dark wood tones, as I mentioned earlier. Now, I also noticed this when I put the banister here on the stairs, it um, just didn't show up. So that's a new glitch. That's fun. <laughs> it's not like a huge deal. It's just kind of an odd look, but yeah, it wouldn't show up. I got rid of it a few times and then tried to keep adding it and it just like doesn't show up anymore. I don't know what it is. It's fine. It's like not a big deal. Just know there's a banister in theory, I guess. Now down here is going to be the primary bedroom. And I ended up going with actually more of a blue theme in this room. Initially, I was gonna use this swatch because I really do like that swatch, but then I found the blue swatch and I thought it would work with some of the pieces of artwork that we got with this pack as well. I mean, everything is very complimentary, but I saw this, this blue, and I was like, ooh, ooh, okay, we have a blue swatch of that bed. I'm gonna use that immediately. And now in the primary bedroom, we've got the bed, we've got a dresser, we have a mirror, and we have a chess table. And I used the TV stand that came with this pack. So they have like a nice TV in their bedroom as well. Because why not? I don't know. You know what? I'm I'm kind of against TVs in bedrooms personally. At least I was always against it until we um, <laughs> uh, got a TV for our bedroom. But um, I noticed something. We have a TV stand under the TV category specifically, which is odd because the TV category is just purely TVs. And then I think it's also under the category of a coffee table. There's two separate items that are identical. Now, when I say identical, they might be slightly different in size, but I am confusion over that. I just noticed it as I was doing this build and I was like, I don't fully understand that. So maybe it was an oversight, I don't know. But here you can see that I made the big open balcony. I thought it was so nice. And there's two more bedrooms upstairs as well as another, well, technically it's a three quarter bath not a full bath. And I loved it. I loved it so much. I don't usually like landing areas in a house because they're useless. It's just where you access all the bedrooms. I don't know how to decorate them. They don't really have a purpose. They don't excite me because I don't know why they would. But this one really, really excited me because of the open balcony. So like I said, I add two rocking chairs in front of it. Why you'd want to sit there, I don't know. That's up to you. Maybe it's parents making sure that like their kid downstairs isn't destroying the house. I don't know. It could be whatever you want it to be. But we've got like a bench over at the top of the stairs, just a little side table with these nice lamps from base game. And then you've got the two rocking chairs. I also found a few more things in the catalog while I was going through this and I might add them outside here and there. Not really a big deal. I also added that beautiful big wall mirror from Growing Together. I love it very, very much. And I thought it was very complimentary to this build as well. And then this is going to be the first bedroom that we work on, which is the preteen room. I loved this swatch of the bed. Well, one of the beds that we got with this new pack. I love it with the little sheep. I think it is so cute. And I was going to make this a kid's room and maybe it is more on the juvenile side, which is not an insult that is not derogatory in any, in any way at all, but it is more of like a juvenile theme, but like it's too cute. So who the heck cares? Like, I don't care. And I was so silly. We have a single version of this bed and then we have the double that I quite literally used downstairs. And as I was working on this room, I was like, let me just squish two of these single beds together to make it look like a double. And I do that when we have a single bed that doesn't have a double version, but then I realized we have the double version. So I just used it and the little sheep quilt, like I love it. I think it's so precious. And then we've got that sheep rug. And then I use the wagon wheel that's over the fireplace and I put it over the bed. And I thought it was just such a nice, kind of elegant, but rustic, singular decoration to go over the bed. I thought it looked, I just thought it looked really pretty. And it, it didn't make me feel like I had to decorate the rest of the wall space behind the bed. I thought it was really nice. I really liked it. I did struggle with this room though, just because I didn't have a particular sim in mind outside of maybe childhood, maybe teenhood. Hence why I ended up with the kind of like pre-teenhood thought. But we've got a bookcase, we've got a desk, and then I do add just a couple of wall decorations. But again, I wanted to keep the color scheme of this room very, very soft. And I wanted it to kind of match the rest of the house, which I don't typically do. So I was a bit restricted in what I, ended up choosing for decorations, but I still think it looks decorated. It's simplistic enough. And I think you could envision a ton of different Sims having this room. Do you know what I mean? Like it, it's not really specific to a personality type or a specific interest even. It's just a very neutral preteen room. And you could have a child in here, you could have a teen in here. It really doesn't matter. It's whatever you would like. But I added a few picture frames as well. And then I think I just added 
yeah, the stuffed dog toy. So like kid more so, I guess. I don't know. And then there's also this little like, it's not really a side table, but it's considered a surface. And then I just put a small mirror above it aside from the full length mirror on the other side. And that's it. Like it's not heavily decorated. We move on to this room, which again could be, it could be for grandparents if that's how you wanted to play. It could just be a guest room. It could be a teen who literally doesn't care to decorate their room to their interests and they quite literally just sleep here. I don't know. It could be whatever you would like. It does not matter. But I decided to use some darker woods in here instead and the green quilted swatch of this bed. I really, really liked it. I hadn't used it before, so that was kind of nice. And then I think I just added, we've got the dresser, we've got the side table. I think I add, oh, the wood burning stove, my favorite item ever. I added one downstairs into the primary bedroom and then I added one up here in the guest room. Since it was more of a kid preteen room, I didn't add one there. I thought that could be in theory a little bit dangerous, but I added one here because I really love that item so much. It's probably my favorite item that came with this pack. And then I do not show me decorating that other bathroom because it was identical to the one downstairs pretty much, except there's only a shower. But now we're in the stable. So I add the troughs for water and then the feeding things, the feeders, I guess they're just called. I added the nectar making thing over here. We've got some barreled uh, nectar. What am I trying to say? Am I losing it? I'm like 26 minutes in, I can't talk. Um, some barrels of nectar that are aging over there. And then I was trying to just figure out what, what else I could put in here. Now, again, there's a dining table. I know it's weird, but if they had some people over, like I said, taking a tour of their grounds, of their ranch, I don't, I don't know, maybe they do tours. Who knows? I'm gonna say they do tours, okay? It's fine. But if they had some people over, then they could grab some fresh samples of nectar and just plop down at the table. I also used this hay rug that I hadn't used yet. I love it. I think it is, it is a great detail. I really enjoyed using it and making it look like there's hay kind of strewn about inside the stable itself. But it's a really nice stable. I tested this too. I wasn't sure if the horses would go through those stable doors. That seems silly. It sounds silly but you never know. So I tested it, worked great. I also add a ton of rocking chairs out on this little front part of the porch, which I loved. I added a few on the back as well. Very simplistic. I just kept it to the rocking chairs and that's it. I added this wagon of flowers to the near the front door. Another rocking chair, there's plenty of places to rock on this property, guys. This is so many places. And then I realized that I had to figure out the back here too, which kind of made me sad because I didn't really know what to do. But this is where we end up putting the like oversized crop gardening plots as well. I did add a lot of them. So if you are committed to gardening or if you hire a ranch hand slash a gardener or something like that, you're good to go, but it would be a lot, I said, like I said, to maintain. This is a big lot, any lot like this that has a ton of activities. It's gonna be tough if you're not using cheats. I'm just gonna say it, it's gonna be really hard, especially if you have like a bigger family with a ton of Sims, like it's, it's gonna be rough. But I did figure it out. We've got, you know, like an old tractor over there. I tried to work on some more of the landscaping towards the back of the house. We've got the garden all set, very, very simplistic. I added a couple of sprinklers, I think, in there as well. Um, I might do it towards the end, I'm not quite sure. And then I've got this big old rusted thing that came with horse ranch. I know somebody's gonna know what it is and you're probably gonna tell me in the comments, so I appreciate you ahead of time. I don't know what it is. Looks like an oil drum to me, but I, I don't know. I also added the new, uh, what is it called? I'm gonna call it the barbecue. Cause I, I mean, it is a horse ranch pack. I was thinking it's like a barbecue. Grill, grill, that's what it's called. And here is that platform I mentioned earlier that just has a picnic table for outdoor dining and uh, <laughs> surprise, surprise, two more rocking chairs. But what I do is I do adjust the size so I can use those string lights from the toddler stuff pack and just enclose it in those string lights. It makes it a perfect square, which I'm not a huge fan of, but I thought it was just kind of a cute thing to add. And it's a little bit different from what I would do typically in a backyard. So I, I gave it a shot anyway, and I kind of added some more landscaping just to see if that would make me feel like it was less awkward, like awkwardly placed. Also, those little grass pieces in the debug menu, they saved this lot for me because having those, same with the ones from Cottage Living, chef's kiss, it makes the grass look three-dimensional and it, it just looks so, so, so nice. I loved it so, so much. But yeah, like we're getting really close to the end of the build here. I stumbled through this. I was like stammering because I'm legitimately so excited for this. I didn't think I was ever going to do another 64 by 64 lot. I think this lot could be a ton of fun if you are really into that ranch life and taking care of a ton of animals and 
running your own farm and really earning that income, because I think being a rancher and raising horses is pretty lucrative in this game, at least with how it's built. I would explore it if you haven't already. But yeah, I think it's a cool lot and I hope you all liked it. I cannot wait to hear your thoughts on this one and I will catch you next time I post a video and I'll talk to you soon. Bye. It's true.